hey guys and welcome to or welcome back to my channel my name is koda if you don't know me and if you do know me welcome back to my channel uh so today is episode two of black in my 20s um i'm very excited for this one um i wanted to wait to film this because natural hair is such a big part of my experience as a black woman and it's also a big part of just like myself my identity in general um, and I think that this is a conversation that definitely <laughs> needs to be had. Um, so I'm excited for this one and I, I want to preface this and I assume that I will probably continue to do this in my other episodes, but when I'm talking about my experiences, these are my experiences. I'm in no way trying to say that this is a universal experience for all black women. There's no monolithic black woman experience. So to say that would be false. So take that as you will. Um, this is more intended for us to share our ideas, bounce off different ideas, give you different perspectives. And if I don't give you a different perspective, then maybe you resonate with some things that I say. So I feel like with every episode, I should also start with some sort of history or background that relates to the topic. So today we're talking about natural hair and more specifically like natural hair and femininity as a black woman. So, you know, had to wear my hair out, thought it was fitting. Um, growing up, I always had natural hair, never had any perms, any texturizers or anything in my hair. It would be very rare that I would straighten my hair I remember in elementary school, I wanted my hair straight sometimes because my mom growing up, I've only ever seen my mom with straight hair. Um, she doesn't have any like relax or anything, but she just always straightened her hair. It was easier for her to manage and it just kind of became her look. Uh, when my mom was young, she used to wear her hair curly, but for as long as I've known her, I've never really seen her hair curly. So for me, a lot of the natural hair came from my other cousins or family and I my family just always embraced my hair um I also look a lot like my brother and uh <laughs> growing up people would always compare us as twins and whatever so I think that for a little bit this needs to stop squeaking sorry guys for a little bit um I felt insecure about my look just because I felt like I looked more like a boy and then I was already like a tomboyish child like anything that screamed femininity I would be really reluctant to accept so whether that would be like dresses or skirts or like the color pink or things that people associate with femininity oh my gosh <laughs> associate with femininity I was very like opposed to and just wanted to remove myself completely from that so that's something to keep in mind and I think that that's also contributed to why femininity for me has just been like um, something that's hard for me to define for myself. But I, as I'm getting older, I don't share that sentiment. Um, one thing that's really important is that I grew up and still live in, well, my community is not very white anymore. Um, I would say that it's pretty mixed race now. Like, there's a lot of blends of different cultures and ethnicities and races. Um, but growing up, there were bare white people everywhere. Um, and I had always gone to predominantly white institutions. And I, I mean, obviously I knew that my hair was different, but I didn't really associate that with something negative up until uh i don't even remember what grade this was but in early elementary school one of my close friends natural hair like me very coily hair and one of like our friends in our friend group like called her like licorice hair but the thing is at the time i don't think that i mean this is assuming like you know child thinking i don't think that she understood like what um she was alluding to like she was making fun of her hair in a way but she didn't really see it as an insult um i'm assuming that that's just something that she heard heard like other people say or like whatever and i remember that hitting my childhood friend pretty hard and i mean i can imagine that that had contributed to her possible struggle with 
her natural hair. I mean, I'm not speaking for her to say that she has struggled with it, but um, I remember that hitting her pretty hard. And I also had other kids in school who would just talk about my hair. I would get my hair braided sometimes, but for the most part, like my hair would be natural or like my mom would twist it up for me in different styles and people would just um not make fun of my hair but just be like oh like want to touch my hair very interested whatever I'm not mad if you're interested in my hair but just don't touch me (laughs) um but yeah I don't think I I don't I wouldn't say I had a rough time with kids in school or going to predominantly white institutions um with my natural hair the only thing that was really big were like small little snarky comments or like talking about my hair length and how um people would always be like oh like how long is your hair really or like you know things like that um and I think that that most of that was just born out of curiosity and not out of malice so I yeah I never really took much to heart in grade six I was in the school play and it was Beauty and the Beast and this I guess would be one of the moments where I was like oh like other people see my hair as bad (laughs) like it's not that they just think it's different but they also think it's bad um I was in grade six and I was the lead in the school musical and my intention for the musical I was playing bell um I was like oh like I'm gonna do like a little ponytail with my hair because bell has a ponytail and I remember like the drama teacher and the musical teacher they were really pushing for me to get my hair straightened and they're like it's not going to match the look or like it's not going to whatever if I didn't straighten my hair and in grade six I didn't really I didn't really know what they meant and I'm like but Belle has a ponytail and I'm gonna put my hair in a ponytail um I ended up straightening my hair for the play and I never really liked I never really liked my hair straight because I had one really bad <laughs> haircut and my hair was straight. And I remember my friends uh, terrorized me for that haircut. And ever since then, I just never wanted my hair straight again. I hated how it looked and it was just, I just didn't want to do it. Um, but yeah, so I straightened it for the play and didn't love my hair. And I suffered some heat damage after that. And then after that, I was like, okay, so it's not that they didn't see that I um they didn't it wasn't that they thought that I couldn't do the ponytail the thing was just that it just didn't match the image that they were trying to put on yeah I was in grade six um (laughs) and then later on I discovered YouTube and the curly hair community and let me tell y'all when the natural hair community was in its prime I I mean I wouldn't say it's not in its prime right now but like there is a there was a specific time from like um in the 2010s where natural hair was like the biggest thing on YouTube you saw all the natural hair creators and um I became really in love and obsessed with my hair doing my hair trying different styles trying different products and that's where I started to love my hair not that I never loved it before but I was never like passionate about it until that point but I also noticed that there was a big divide within the natural hair community on YouTube anyways because there's the natural hair community and then there's the curly hair community and I mean in elementary and in elementary school like I'm not making the connection with those differences but I do think that I don't really like the divide natural hair meaning like coily hair like four type four hair and up and then curly hair being like 2a or to like three something I also don't like those terminologies for hair types um I'm not the biggest fan of labels unless I feel like they're productive but I don't feel like those sort of labels are very productive um because the type of curl that you have doesn't necessarily indicate how you would treat your hair and it just becomes another dividing factor among black women or women with um, natural hair Uh, so there's that Um, and then I was also very insecure because um, obviously the girls that I knew growing up who had curly hair like 3c hair um 
that you would typically see like their hair would be curly and long and mine would be long but then it dries and it's like this and so I struggled for a while with um being okay with the fact that my hair shrinks up I think that we also have um I wouldn't say that I mean it is a Eurocentric beauty, beauty standard but it's also like become now almost a worldwide beauty standard that I would say maybe not maybe that's ignorant to say um but just the obsession with long hair and how that associates with your womanhood um for me my shrinkage made me feel like I looked like a little boy when I would do styles with my curly hair I just felt like I looked like a little boy as I grew into my teen years because what I saw for women is that they had very long luscious hair their hair is very thick and the length um would symbolize like oh like you know i don't know how to like ex explain it but you you should understand the undertones that i'm trying to explain <laughs> um and so for a long time i associated femininity with long hair like um you know feminine features but what what even are feminine features like that's so i don't i don't know this is why labels labels and myself we're not always friends um but yeah so uh wanting long hair for a while and then as I became a teenager I just wanted straighter hair or I wanted to straighten my hair um so that people could see that my hair was long and for me I guess that was me to kind of prove like yeah I have hair or yeah like you know my hair can be long and you know I can walk in a ponytail and have my ponytail sway like all the other girls in gym class <laughs> um and then also in media like a lot of the black women that i would see on screen would be black women who don't have their natural hair um or their hair is if it's natural it's straightened or manipulated or braids or whatever their style to show off the length or to show that they have hair um and so i think that that for a while was just associated with what i thought femininity was I mean, now I, I don't align with that, but um, the obsession with long hair is definitely something that I think then the black community we need to talk about because um, I would receive comments. My cousins have thicker hair than me. I'd receive comments from like family members, like talking about my hair and talking about the length of my hair and things like that. And like, although they weren't intentionally trying to, I guess, put down my other cousins and other people that I knew, but you could just tell like i don't know there's there's definitely some underlying things that people will say like oh you have long like tall hair that's something that jamaicans say um i don't know if that's just jamaicans but like having tall hair or having good hair you have nice hair like nice hair or good hair is hair that is healthy to me um so yeah things like that i, I never like those sort of comments um and i also like this is also even continuously in media especially on tiktok i feel like tiktok is so damaging <laughs> i mean i still use tiktok but um like the obsession with like the placenta perm and just long hair black women with long hair proving that you have hair showing pictures oh show me your real hair like stuff like that i it's just like who cares like really who cares um and then also this like obsession with long hair then follows us into things like wigs and weaves and as much as much as y'all do not want to admit it and i know there will be there will be people that fight me on this but let me let me think of how i want to say this um a lot of people's reasonings for not wearing their natural hair that i can think of are that it takes too much time um or they just don't like their hair or they just don't want to do it i fit in the category of maybe the i don't really want to do it um i think that i don't think my hair is hard to do i really don't like that um connotation that black hair is hard or natural hair is hard um i don't think that it necessarily is your hair becomes hard when you are trying to make it do things that it doesn't do so for me 
um, what would make my hair hard for me would be if I'm trying to manipulate it in different styles. If I'm continuously trying different like twisting and wash and go techniques or like curling techniques to manipulate my curls, that's when my hair becomes hard. The view that your natural hair is complicated or difficult to deal with is because you think that it in its fully natural state is not acceptable. I'm going to let y'all sit with that one. I'm going to let y'all sit with that one for a second. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't think that that's, that's really false for... Oh, I don't want to say it's universal because, again, I'm trying to stop using words like that because these experiences are not universal. But um, there is some, some truth to that. Like, if you wash your hair and put, like, something in to moisturize it and leave, that is doing your natural hair. People say it's hard because you guys, not you guys, but, like, you know, the natural hair community, we do the wash day your whole wash routine and then we're like putting all these products in we're braiding we're twisting we're putting all these rods in and there's nothing wrong with trying to manipulate your hair like trying different styles and stuff but what i'm saying is that um it's the styles that are hard and not your hair itself um also uh for me personally i wore like headband wigs and um wigs in like the ending years of high school like sometimes and it wasn't because I didn't like my hair I just wanted like long hair again that obsession with long hair um and I'm also I, I don't want to say I'm lazy but when it comes to my hair like if I could not do it I'm, I'm gonna choose not to do it um not because it's hard but just because like it's just another thing to think about <laughs> like if I could just not worry about my hair it takes something off of my plate um but then I was reflecting a little bit about like why I wore those wigs or why I would like want my braids to be long like it's not like I would do braids that would simulate my hair sometimes I would do shorter braids but for the most part like what I was doing was changing my hair so it doesn't look like how it does and it is true that parts of those come from like um that eurocentric perspective of beauty standards and um hair standards in general uh at least for me um and I think that it's important for people to black women to um acknowledge that because acting like you're not doing it for those reasons does nothing but halt your own growth and acceptance of your beauty and your hair and um yeah it, it doesn't harm anybody ex except for yourself when you're holding these things um to you and holding these standards another thing that i wanted to mention uh was how black women or us as a community in general um like uh I don't want to say demonize our hair, but demonize for lack of better terms. Uh, what I mean by this is saying that our hair is not appropriate for certain things. A big thing, especially on TikTok. I have to mention TikTok again. But another one is like when I remember there was this thing going around where girls were saying that like their natural hair or like braids are not a birthday style or like not birthday hair. And like your birthday hair is like a wig or a bust down. I think a wig and a bust down are the same thing <laughs> but you get what i'm saying um the idea was that your curly hair or you having braids that's not birthday enough and i think there's uh, deeper questions to be asked here why do you think that you can't wear your curly hair on your birthday or why do you think that you can't wear braids on your birthday for me personally my hairstyle uh, around my birthday has always been braids because my birthday's in the summer um for me it's harder for my curls to stay in the heat so having my hair braided is just easier and I, you know once again if i don't have to do my hair i'm not going to but it's never because i don't like it it's just that it's it's so much better to for me to have my hair done especially in the school year and stuff and just be able to leave the house and not have to you know be doing anything um or maintaining my hair i guess 
And I think that that idea of even like saying that your hair is not birthday hair, it's not okay for certain events or spaces is going back to like deep rooted colonialism and that sort of thinking. Um, And by doing that, the only thing that we're doing is reinforcing that for ourselves and then also for other black women that see us or other black women that may look up to you or black girls. Um, Another thing that's kind of related is like that clean girl aesthetic that's been going around. Um, I, I want you to close your eyes and picture when I say clean girl aesthetic, what's the first thing that pops in your mind? And I, you don't have to share it, but I just want you to be aware of what it is that you're thinking when you associate words be- with things. Because words, obviously, they mean things. Um, if I'm being honest, when I think of the clean girl aesthetic, I'm thinking of th- what TikTok has shown me the clean girl aesthetic to be. And this is not to say that black women are not clean, because that's not, that's not the point that I'm trying to make. When I think of the clean girl aesthetic... I'm thinking of lighter skin. I'm thinking of uh, straight hair. And that's just what I've been presented on the media. I mean, not necessarily white women, but just that look. And the clean girl aesthetic has favored lighter skin and long hair or straight hair. These ideas that we accept from the media, they stick with you. Whether you accept them or not, um, there are like sub- subliminals and subconscious things that you consume and even if even if they're not conscious like when you just close your eyes and thought about the clean girl aesthetic i just want you to think about what popped into your mind and there that's the point that i was trying to make um so things like that how we talk about our hair and how we digest um beauty standards i feel like contribute a lot to how we view our own hair um me now i mean i'm 21 i love my hair i don't always love wash day i don't always love doing my hair but it's it's no longer a thing of insecurity for me um i feel like i look most like myself when my hair's out i mean i I should feel like I look most like myself with my hair out. I do. Um, I love my curls. I love it when it shrinks. I love it when it's stretched. I love it. And um, I would hope that a lot of people also love their natural hair. I just think that this, this was definitely a conversation that needed to be had because I even hear like these sort of comments not necessarily in my circle, but like there are little little comments here and there where I'm like, oh, like, why would you say that about your hair and your natural hair is beautiful? Like, what? Um, jeez. These bugs. Every time the bugs start buzzing in my ear, that's when I know it's getting close to wrap up. <laughs> um, but yeah, this conversation was um, good. I think that there's definitely a lot more that I could say about natural hair, and I'm sure that I will do plenty and plenty of more episodes that talk about natural hair because I've had um, many experiences with my hair, and my hair is a constant, a constant thing that's not necessarily on my mind, but like it's something that I think about pretty frequently, um, and I think that that's the case for a lot of black women like I plan out what my hair is gonna look like what I'm gonna do with my hair or like whatever from months in advance (laughs) um so yeah I I hope that um all of us as I mean I'm saying us assuming that everybody's watching is a black woman if you're not then I hope that this gave you some sort of um inside perspective I guess um but I hope that most black women really let go of the tie that we have to our hair and that tie being negative um because i promise you it is so much easier to um like fall into your feminine energy and to um 
feel like yourself if you just accept things for what they are and if you are a protective style warrior all the power to you you know i i can't say that i'm not a protective style warrior either but i i switch it up nothing wrong with with having your protective styles i just think that it's important to just be aware of like why are you getting your protective styles or like you know just th- just think about it just think about it do a little bit of thinking because even if you're not consciously thinking oh i'm getting this style so i can have like long hair or whatever um it's it's still something that's with your thought um so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this episode uh this was shorter than the first um i hope i'm thinking that maybe what i may start to do is posting my topics a little bit earlier on like maybe my instagram or something i'll put my instagram on the screen but maybe on my instagram so that you guys can give like some of your ideas or things that you would want me to talk about um so that by the time i get to filming i can include those in the episodes um also thank you so much for all the positive feedback on the first one i was very pleased and i'm very glad that people are connecting and i want i want people to i want you to think that's that's the point of this i want you to think and i want you to reflect on your own experiences and possibly think about other people's experiences and just to keep an open mind So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below for more. And I will see you in the next one.